This is the first video in a two-part sequence related to binary logistic regression in MATLAB. In this video, we'll download, clean, and explore some data. In the next video, we'll use MATLAB to perform binary logistic regression. This data from Kaggle contains the gender, age, and salary of a thousand people, and also contains a column describing whether or not they purchased a car. The purchase decision variable is binary in nature, which makes this data set an ideal candidate for binary logistic regression. In essence, we're going to build a model which predicts the odds of someone purchasing a vehicle based on their gender, age, and salary. You can download the data as a CSV using this button up here. I've already done this, so I'm going to jump into MATLAB so we can start pre-processing the spreadsheet. Now that we're in MATLAB, we need to clean and explore the data before we can fit a model. The first step is to import the CSV into MATLAB. I'm using the read table function to convert the CSV into a MATLAB table. This is because some of the model fitting functions we'll use in the next video accepts tables as an input as opposed to vectors. Therefore, the read table function is preferred over something like read matrix. We can see that our data set has a thousand rows and five columns. There are some changes we should make to this table. The first column is a user ID, which is irrelevant, so we should eliminate this column. The second column contains a character vector describing the gender of each participant. In practice, we know that these are categorical variables, so we need to convert the data type of the second column from a character vector to a categorical variable. Finally, I would like to express the annual salaries in terms of thousands of dollars, so we should divide the entries in this column by 1000. We don't need to modify the age or purchase columns. In this line, I set the entire first column to an empty vector, which deletes it. Now our dataset will only have four columns. Then I change the entries in the gender category to be a categorical data type instead of a cell string. Note that I'm using dot notation to access this particular column of the data table. Finally, I divided the annual salaries by 1000. The next section of the script is already filled in to save some time. Here, I'm extracting the second and third columns of the data table, which are the age and annual salary. I'm also converting these entries from a table data type to a double data type. This is because the summary statistics functions I invoke here work best with doubles instead of tables. Then I obtain the summary statistics and print it to the command window. We can see that there's a wide spread of each variable, which reflects the study population's diverse demographics. Now let's make some plots to explore the data. Let's start by making a histogram of the age distributions separated by gender and purchase decision. I'm going to make one window for all the males and one window for all the females. Within each window, I'll make two histograms. The first histogram will show the age distribution for those who purchased the vehicle, and the second histogram will show the age distribution for those who did not purchase the vehicle. Therefore, I first need to separate the data by gender. I'm extracting all of the male participants in the dataset and storing it in the data M variable and doing a similar operation for all of the female participants. Now let's make an H histogram for the males separated by purchase decision.
Both histograms have 10 bins with a 5-year width. This first spin encompasses all the 15 to 20-year-old participants, and the last spin encompasses all the 60 to 65-year-old participants. I determined these bins because the summary statistics indicated that the minimum age is 18 and the maximum age is 63. In this line, I'm extracting all the entries for the males who purchased vehicles, then making a histogram based on their age distributions. The second histogram repeats this, but for the males who did not purchase vehicles. We can do something similar for the woman. These histograms indicate that vehicle purchasers tend to skew older, whereas younger people tend to not purchase vehicles. This makes sense, as younger folks probably don't have the capital needed to purchase vehicles compared to the older folks. We just made histograms showing the age distributions. Now let's analyze the salary distributions. Like before, I'm going to separate the data by gender and purchase decision. This time, the bins have a width of $10,000. It seems that someone with a lower salary is less likely to purchase a car than someone with a higher salary. This is logical. You could argue that the age histograms look somewhat normally distributed, but the salary histograms do not. There are ways to test if data are normally distributed, but that's beyond the scope of this video. Now let's make a scatter plot of the age versus salary data separated by gender and purchase decision once again. This will hopefully reinforce the trends we observed in this figure. The gscatter function makes a scatter plot of the first two arguments separated by the third argument. In this case, we're making a scatter plot of the male age data on the y axis and the male salary data on the x axis separated by the purchase decision. The second gscatter statement does the exact same thing, but for the woman. The lower left quadrants of points are mostly x's, suggesting that both young men and women with low salaries do not purchase vehicles. As both age and salary increase, the number of vehicle purchases tend to increase as well. Furthermore, men and women age 45 and above tend to purchase vehicles regardless of salary. Those who make at least $80,000 per year tend to purchase vehicles regardless of age. However, these purchasers skew older since not many young adults in the study made $80,000 or more. These findings are consistent with the findings elucidated from the previous histograms. Finally, let's determine the strength of the correlations between age, salary, and purchase decision. We'll use the Pearson correlation coefficient for this part. I calculated each Pearson correlation coefficient for the age, salary, and purchase decision variables using the core cof function, then plotted each coefficient on a heat map. The ones along the main diagonal are expected because each variable is perfectly correlated with itself. Each correlation coefficient is positive, so all variables are positively correlated to some degree. The binary logistic model will fit in the next video should reflect this. The age and salary variables are weakly correlated. The correlation between the age and purchase decision is a relatively strong 0.616, and the correlation between the salary and purchase decision is about half as strong at about 0.365. These plots give us a good understanding of our data. 
Remember that it's critical to explore the data before you fit a model to it. In the next video, we'll use binary logistic regression to make a model predicting the probability that someone will purchase a vehicle based on their gender, age, and annual salary. See you next time.